Chapter 54 In a year with no name The dead do not measure the passage of time A minute, an hour, a century are all the same to them Nine million years could pass One named for every species on earth And yet it would be no different from a single revolution around the sun They do not feel the heat of flames Or the cold of space They do not suffer the mourning of loved ones left behind or carry the anger for all the things they had yet to do. They are not at peace, nor are they in turmoil. They are not anything but gone. Their next stop is infinity, and the mysteries that might wait there. The dead have nothing left to them but a silent faith in that unknowable infinity, even if theirs is a belief that nothing waits but an infinity of infinities, because believing in nothing is still believing in something. And only by reaching eternity will anyone know the truth of it all. The deathies are very much like the dead, but with one exception. The deathies do not know infinity, which means they don't have to concern themselves with what to age beyond. They have something the dead do not. They have a future, or at least, the hope of one. In a year that is yet to be named, she opens her eyes, a pink sky. A small circular window, weak, tired, a vague sense of having been somewhere else before arriving here. Otherwise her mind is clouded and full of intangibles, nothing to grab onto. She knows this feeling, she has experienced it twice before. Revival is not like waking up, it is more like putting on an old pair of favorite pants. There's a struggle at first to fit inside one's own skin, to feel comfortable in it. To let its fabric stretch and breathe and remind you why it's your favorite. There's a familiar face before her. It gives her comfort to see it. He smiles. He's exactly the same. And yet somehow different. How can that be? Perhaps it is just a trick of that strange light coming in through the little window. Hey, he says gently. She's alert enough to realize he's holding her hand. Perhaps he's been holding it for a while. Hey, she says back, her voice gravely and rough. Weren't we just... running? Yes, there was something going on, and we were running. His smile broadens. Tears fill his eyes. They drop slowly, as if gravity itself has become less sediment, less demanding. When was that? Saito asks. Only a moment ago, Rowan tells her. Only a moment ago. Hey guys, started talking. We meet again, ladies and gentlemen. With this ending, we finished the trilogy from such a nice series, which I hope you enjoyed as much as me. E during this episode, I'll give my opinion as usual, and then I'll tell you some news. So I would appreciate it if you stayed with me here. First, with the opinion, for those who are just here for that. About this book... I felt like it was to rust in the end, with the awaited encounters, no? Like Saitra, Farday, Rowan and Grison colliding and closing all the plots in a kind of race. It was really nice, don't misunderstand me, but it was a noticeable change of rhythm pace, being quite a speed up during the last 200 pages. And honestly, I think the pace was just fine as, as slow as it was. Like it felt great and chill, so some people would say the book should be shorter, uh, but for me it should be longer and give it time and love. But I may be biased, because yeah, more pages means more content. I was afraid also I was going to dislike it when I saw space came into play, since I'm not a big fan of it, but no, as always, during the series, it was really nice to read. Also, I thought the iterations would develop into an evil thunderhead, and felt weird that it didn't, but was satisfied at the same time with the result, Cyrus. I liked doing a different robotic voice, like more mundane and that. Uh, it was really nice also, how they thought the thunderhead plan was to revive the glint in outer space, and then Cyrus makes clear that it's not like that. I thought it was only a solution for our population, where they would start portal societies eventually, and it was really interesting that some sites who just wanted to keep having their privileges were sabotaging his attempts in order to do so. Human nature, no? 
It doesn't mind how great our lives are. Some people are always greedy for more. But yeah, the whole series has been about that. Uh, it wasn't the ending I was expecting and felt a bit out of order, but not easy to make a grand finale for this series. So even if I'm trying to be critical here, personally, like I said, I'm quite satisfied with the result. Regarding Godward also, I mean, Rand had many disputes during the series with him, and it justifies it in a way, but he was such a pain in the ass the whole time just to be stopped like this? It felt weird though. Even more so that Ain takes his body with her, like, why? Just let the man sink in the sea, or, or better, burn for real this time, concluding a cycle. But no, what's better than that? Survive Tiger. Didn't expect it. Plus, after the diamonds exploded and the Thunderhead died, like he's still doing it things, but won't talk anymore, since everyone is unsavory, including the Thunderhead to Grison. <laughs> but not Grison itself, no? But you understand me. And that's why we have this image of the toll, I guess, and its analysis in the future, talking about immortality, sites, and even the Thunderhead as it, if it was just a myth, which was really interesting. I wonder how many years in the future, though. Uh, but overall, I love this book and the series. But yeah, like this one felt a bit slow, which I was enjoying, and Kinda rushed in the end, like like I said, which made a huge contrast and is making me say this. Definitely the worst from the three, which doesn't mean it was bad for me. Plus all the threads seem pretty well tied up by the author, also, and the storytelling was quite organized and easy to follow and understand, leaving us, or me at least, mouth gasped, not literary, or actually yes, sometimes. If I had to complain about something, it is just that it was maybe too long or too short. But I can understand that, uh, literally speaking, it was really nice. Like, yeah, I mean, the grand finale had to be written in a way that had some uh, characteristics and, you know, some threads for helping with the storytelling and uh, burying the rhythm paces, like... That must be some writer's uh, tool. Um, what else? Regarding technical matters, I noted down voice patterns this time, so had somewhere to go back to. But at some point, there were so many characters that some were quite similar, and I just got to pray they didn't bump into each other. So, even if similar, voices were not confused in the middle of a conversation. But yeah. <laughs> My prayers were incurred and they just collided everyone in the atoll. Also, I was checking pronunciation for words often, but yeah, can't do it all the time or I would never finish. So sometimes I just changed after I realized I was mispronouncing the word a lot of times, and others I only came to know after I finished the book already. <coughs> Blake. Pretty satisfied with the result though. And by the way, my notes were things like asshole boys and things like that. I know sometimes they changed to after recording in different days, but yeah, it's what happens when I'm improvising most of the time. Next day, we'll have cleanings already. My biggest expectation from this book uh, is that we'll have some characters from the past and others with what happens next. With Astrid and the Tonys, for example, or how Earth evolved since then. Since then. Maybe a full book is not a good idea, but a short story from those things feel really exciting and appealing to me. <laughs> I'm afraid it won't be the case though. But I hope it will come sooner or later, like, you know, another book with that. I still will get to discover some incognitas left from the beginning of the Scythum, and even learn more about character stories like Godur, Xenocrates, and Conor Abel sides Michael Farday and Marie Curie, and what experiences build their personalities. Those characters, I'm sure they will appear. I was thinking about giving my opinion after every chapter, because they are independent, but yeah, that would be stressing probably, and I wouldn't have the full view of the book. So, I considered taking some notes with my thoughts when I finish this chapter, and then I'll elaborate it a bit more, like I've been doing so far. Which, by the way, I didn't do yet, after having recorded 5 chapters already, and I even talked in the end of 2 of them though. That's how nice they were. Uh, so I don't know how I will be doing the the opinion next time when I finish that book. But I'll leave it for the search of the future, you know. 
That said, and I'm almost finished here, I used to read your comments and you tend to do it even months after the episode was uploaded. I'm saying this because I checked a previous episode from when I was starting some months ago, and yeah. On one hand it felt like I felt kind of ashamed about how bad it was at it, and how bad I was at it, I mean. And on the other, I'm pretty proud about how much I improved doing this in comparison. Even if not everything was the voice, and I also changed some audio adjustments. And, like, I made some audio adjustments, I mean. Mm, yeah, I will keep working and get better at this. Because, yeah, there's always something to improve, no? I thought I was quite decent at it, other than the pronunciation in English, of course. And if you compare two episodes now, they look like different worlds. Lastly, I just wanted to tell that I'm going on holidays for a month to Brazil. So there won't be more episodes until then. Nah, I'm joking. I left 2nd of May, so as you listen to this, I'm already there, or even back, it depends on how you, when you're listening. I didn't want to stop uploading daily episodes, so I pre-recorded almost a whole month in advance. In fact, I kept postponing this speech, and it's the last thing I'm recording before leaving. This part is always a distressing one. So I'm pretty excited and satisfied here. Even proud that I managed to record 22 episodes in the last 10 days, while I was still keeping up with working, the game, studying, and even preparing the things for traveling. But yeah, I'm not here to show off. Uh, but in general, I feel relieved, and I'd be thankful that if you enjoyed it and liked it, you follow me on YouTube or Spotify where you are listening, or even both, and it's always nice to see ratings, likes, and comments too. Like, I've always been, I've always been one of those persons who thought it was something useless, but yeah, it definitely encourages me to keep going with this project. I don't know if it's like that for everyone, but I bet so. I will record again in June, so it will take some time to get used again. I'm recording this on April 29th, uh, this last one, you know. Uh, despite that, I will read aloud to minimize as much getting rusty. Yeah, I will read them like this. Yeah, that's how I like to enjoy my free time. Recording and reading. I'm going to put a poll with some options to read after the links. You can change your choice until it finishes, like until I finish the links, almost. So make sure to vote with nothing to fear. It will be available to vote until I finish with clinics, so around June, July. The options I had in mind are 1. Eragon, about magic and dragons, maybe you know the movie and you know the series, it's for books. Uh, 2. Shadow Hunters, the main series, for now, which I read some books when I was younger and it was pretty nice and easy to read with supernatural beings and those things. 3. The Age of the Five Magic Trilogy, that is from Through the Canavan, which I read uh, not a trilogy, but yeah, six books already, and it was really nice, but this one I didn't read it. And four, Fairy Tale, last book from Stephen King, which I also want to read. Yeah, I have many books to read that I think should be a fact that you should know. Uh, five, Dry or Game Changer from Neil Sasterman, too. That is two independent books, and it's only an individual book, so I could read one of them and then go next. And sixth, Mistborn from Brandon Sanderson, that I thought I'm reading, uh, but I think I would need some more practice before getting into his universe, because uh, there would be a hell of a ton of characters in his books, and definitely an elaborate language. So I'm not really sure about this one. Not a native speaker here, you know. I never read it, uh, but he's pretty famous among us fantasy readers, no? Isn't he? I thought also about reading Percy Jackson, like I listened to this one on a podcast on Spotify called The World of Percy Jackson, uh, that it's kind of what motivated me to record myself. Uh, it's a girl who does it pretty well, but she uploads episodes weekly, so when if, if she already is on the second series, I could catch up, but whatever. Probably I read this one in Spanish, yeah, if I do it. Doesn't make much sense doing otherwise, because uh, she does it pretty well in English and you have it available. Uh, just that I like reading in the original language, but up to you guys. Well, up to you. <laughs> like, make sure to vote on Spotify under this episode, and or on YouTube in the community post sections. But in the end... Uh, you know, maybe one wins, and then I read another, you know, it depends on 
on the mood and what I want to read at the time. Like I, as I said, I have many options. Uh, I didn't even finish reading a book like Linux. Well, yeah, Linux I, I just started, but I was still reading the toll, and I was already thinking of three or four options to read next. Just can read that first. But anyways, I leave it here. Thank you for listening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, sorry for the stories here. And about the speed talking also, you know, like the fastest I talk, the fastest I finish. Uh, but yeah, until we meet again. See you guys.